Okay, the blessed day has arrived. Um, we're going to harvest honey. Just give you a quick look at my um, colony boxes. It's a really nice morning. A little, little warm, but not too bad for the area. We're going to... We have about 15 supers that we're going to harvest some of them. We're not going to do everything. It's kind of a momentous day to us because after five years we've finally gone out and purchased all of our own harvesting equipment so we can do it right in our own garage and I'll give you a little view of that. But um, we're going to get started pretty soon. So sun's still coming up over the horizon. We got a little shade because of our house. Our, our bees are right on our deck. I'm standing out here barefoot and in my shorts. A lot of people think bees are dangerous, but uh, they really aren't. They're very calm. Uh, we haven't worked our bees for four to six weeks, so it may be they, they're a little grumpy today. We'll see, but maybe not. We'll see. Who knows? Um, but uh, we're excited. Okay, so we just pulled over the picnic table in the shade. And after we shake the bees off, we just use that to accumulate the honey and cover it up so the bees don't come and get it. And you can see all my nukes that I use to catch swarms. Um, but for those of you that are afraid of bees, you can see how close I am. Got my flip-flops on and my shorts. And uh, bees are just gentle, I'm telling you. You want to wear protection when you're messing with them, but generally speaking, they're not going to bother anybody because they die when they sting you. As we are about ready to start harvesting, one last thing I wanted to tell you. Uh, we are hopeful that this will be our first over 100 pound harvest from a single colony, so we're pretty excited about that. We've had two years with 90s, but we think this may be our first year over 100, so uh, it feels like a little bit of success. All right, it's a warm day. Humidity is pretty good, so decided to wear shorts today. Hopefully, I won't have to put my pants on. Um, lots of lots of propolis on this inner cover. Um, we're not sure what we're going to find on this colony because we had an escape artist queen that uh, wandered up into the super and did a whole bunch of laying. So about a month ago. We got her back down on the bottom, and hopefully she wasn't able to make another um, escape out of the bottom into the top. So let's take a look and see what we got here. There's lots of bees up here, and uh, they're letting me know they're not happy with this. So um, we'll see how that goes. That doesn't help, though, to drop the frame. They're, they're, a little, they're a little feisty today. Alright, so this is a beautiful frame of honey. Capped, all ready to go. I'll walk up so you can see it really good in the sun. So that white, that white cover keeps everything good and lets you know that the honey is cured. So first thing we do is we got to get all the bees off. So I just do a quick shake, get most of them off, blow the rest off, and then over here um, we have a setup over here where once we get all the bees off, we put them in this empty box and cover them up with a towel so it doesn't attract bees even though they will get attracted at least they won't get in there and we won't have to kill them if they get in our garage when we harvest so we have 15 boxes of supers and I, I know they're not all full if they were all full that'd be about 450 pounds of honey I'm guessing somewhere around 250 but we haven't looked at our colonies for six to eight weeks so we really don't know how to predict. So anyway, that's the start. 
We've got a lot ahead of us. So this is the uncapping collector um, that I mentioned costs about $150. And then some of these frames are more than the first year. The first year they tend to not be beyond the outside of the wood. But once um, you get a couple of years, then it just cuts right down. A lot of people like the um, heated knives. I personally like just the serrated knives. And as you can see, this one can bend, so you can get it um, to cover um, even if it's even if it's not a deep piece of wax. You can bend it in there and get that covered by the blade. So it's usually a little easier. Just need a little momentum here, and then it comes off. Gets catches down there, and then the uh, The grill there will catch the wax and then there will be quite a bit of wax that drains down and so then when you do one, once that's done, then you do the other side. There's a little nail right there that you can rest it on and I pushed a little too hard it looks like because it... Let me get it started. No. Nope. Huh. This is just kind of... This is the first time I've used this knife. There we go. Just get a little momentum going and let the gravity do the work. Very satisfying. Taking off the outer cap of the wax. Very easy. All right. Get that off and then there's a little bit up here. Wipe that off and then it's ready to get put into the extractor. So. Flip it upside down. It's dripping and you want to flip it upside down. The only thing is we didn't get the extractor ready, so let me let me turn the extractor so it's ready to go. Alright. So flip it upside down. And you do it the other way. Just put it right in there. Got a little wax on the top, should have cut that off. And then you fill that up and uh, and you fill it up and once you get it full, you just, uh, you can rotate it just like that. I didn't get it all the way down. So here, let's put it all the way down this time. Oh, it got hung up on the wax. There, now it's all the way down. So put this back, and you can just turn it slowly so you can rotate it for the next one. But, there, but there's, a, there's two in each section. So we'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll show it to you once it's full. All right, we've got six uh, frames loaded up, 18 to 20 pounds of honey. And we'll turn it on slowly. Get it started. Get a little weight out of it. If you look down, I don't know if you can see this in the light, you can see the honey on the side bed in the light. flicks to the outside and then starts running down the wall, collects at the bottom, and comes out the tube. So we can turn it up a little bit. We've got some of that honey out there. We've never had this good a light when we've done this before. See the honey hit the sides of the walls. off 
before we turn it on full speed. It's kind of like a washing machine. On the spin cycle. This not to be so bouncy. It's not. It's not the base. Hold on. All right. We'll turn it up in a second. I think I may need to tighten the bolts. We had to tighten the bolts on the base. This is the uh, main voyage of the spin of the extractor, and I didn't remember that I left the legs on a little loose in case I wanted to make an adjustment. So it's on full speed now. Spinning out all the honey. So, kind of makes a nice little fan on this hot day too. You can see a lot of the honey, the liquid that was on the side is now kind of dripped down into the bottom. Honey is dripped down from the side. All right, these are empty. Moment where we are. Opening up the gate for the first time, and out comes the honey. It looks, looks a little dark. So it's going through the strainer. <clears throat> a strainer, which is sitting on top of the bucket. And then we'll go down into this bucket that we can use to fill our bottles. There's a dead bee that just came through. That's a dead bee part. Nobody wants to eat that, so that's why it goes through the strainer. Mm, yep. So we'll do that with all of the <clears throat> frames. And it will be interesting to see how many five gallon buckets we fill with what we have. We think we have about 47 frames, so it's going to be right, right near 150 pounds. So we'll see if our guess is right. All right, on the, some of the first year frames, because they start out with just foundation, the bees don't build the wax out as far, so the knife can't cut it because it's below the rim of the wood. So we have to use this little picking tool to uh, pick the wax cappings off. So this is just an example of that process. kind of satisfying to just do it a little bit at a time, although it is much longer to do it that way than to do it with the knife. The knife is much faster, but for those people who are a little OCD like me, it's very satisfying to just kind of pick it all the way across until it's just clean. Sometimes though the bees will build it out far enough because the knife can bend that it'll take a big chunk of it off, like this one. Um, looks like most of it, we'll be able to get a lot of it cut off. And that is also very satisfying, watching it just kind of fall like that and roll off. It's amazing what those little bees can do. Yep. Okay, so that one's ready to go in the extractor. Okay, uh, we have finished uh, extracting all of the honey and we have four to four and a half gallons in each of those three buckets plus another four gallons in the capping, uncapping container. 
Uh, so my guess is we're closer to 190 pounds on this first round. We still have a lot of honey left. So my uh, estimate has increased. I think we're going to go over 300 pounds, but we'll see. Uh, also, you know, with it being late in August, early September, the bees may start eating some of the honey too, so we'll see. Uh, one of the surprises we had was one of the, uh, we, we did an experiment this year. Well, actually, before I talk to you about that, let me just talk to you about this, and then I'll just show you a picture. Um, I don't know if you can see on here, but there are gallon marks on the side of this capping container. And in the past, we've been using somebody else's equipment. So we've kind of been in a hurry, get everything done, get it cleaned out. You can see there's four gallons of, of honey in this uncapping container. Well, and if you remember, the uncapping container is where you cut off the wax cappings and it falls on the grill and then the honey falls below. When we got done on Saturday, it was at two gallons. In the morning, it was closer to three. But because we have our own equipment and because of the bottle shortage and we can't bottle anything, we're just kind of on hold. We didn't do anything and just let this thing continue to drain. And now we've gotten close to four gallons. The other thing we've noticed is the wax cappings are so much drier than they've ever been before when we finished because we let them drain more. So typically we are in a hurry to clean up. This year we weren't. We will never do that again. You know, you're always learning. This is the fifth honey harvest. And uh, we probably have an extra gallon of honey just because we had to go slow because of the bottle shortage. The other thing we decided to try this year is to just put the honey supers on the top of the beehives instead of letting the bees just clean them out and rob them out. And part of our motivation before for letting them clean them out themselves was we had such a terrible hive beetle problem that if we were concerned that if we put them back on top of the boxes, they would get overwhelmed by hive beetles or other pests. Since we moved our colonies to the deck, um, we've seen a significant reduction in hive beetles. They're also out in the sun more. Um, they used to be down there, and, and so they get a lot more shade. But now they're back here. Um, another thing to tell everybody about, we decided to try an experiment this year on two colonies and just do a single deep. You can see the that's the bigger box for you um, non-beekeepers, and then the taller box are the honey honey boxes, I mean the, sh the narrower boxes are the honey boxes. Well in both cases, where we did the single deep for you more experienced beekeepers, both cases the queen squeezed through the queen excluder and moved up into the honey boxes and laid eggs. So this was the colony that had well over a hundred pounds of honey in it uh, maybe a month ago and we were just waiting for it to cure and get capped. When we went to harvest it, two or three of the honey boxes were full of brood. So we had to shake the bees down, get them back into the lower box, and uh, let them finish up the honey. But we, I'm sure we lost 40 or 50 pounds of honey that way. So um, we are probably done with that experiment. So we are probably going with just a double deep from now on. Although I wonder if we had harvested some honey, if that would have helped. Maybe they felt like they didn't have enough room and that's why the queen squeezed up. But two out of two makes me think that it's more than coincidence. So just passing on some things we learned this year to you other beekeepers. So I just wanted to explain a little bit more about the empty honey supers and what we do. If you, if you look carefully, you can see the inner cover. That's that unpainted strip, which typically is on the top of the box between the boxes and the lid. And what we do is we put down that inner cover and then put the empty honey box atop of it and then the bees don't think it's part of their storage facility generally speaking not always so the bees go up there clean out all the honey that's sprayed all over every single frame and piece of wood off of those frames after they come out of the extractor and then they use that and carry it back down and store it down below one of the issues you can have is sometimes the bees will treat that as a storage unit and fill it up with neck um, with pollen or other or other nectar but um, we're hoping we've taken a few out already and so far so good but some of these will be on there for a little bit and I'll explain why on my next clip okay after a few days of the honey supers being on top of the box and after the bees have had a chance to clean them out there's always a potential for 
a lot of pests. Um, one of the things that is out there are wax moths and they'll go in and completely destroy all the wax and leave a whole bunch of gross uh, wax moth poop afterwards and web and yuck. And so in order for us, this is, these are the steps we take to get rid of it. So we have a freezer. Um, a more practical freezer would probably be a horizontal, but we have this also because we put food in it. And what we do is we put our honey super on the top shelf along with, you know, all our Costco stuff. But um, we put it in there for 24 hours. It kills anything that might be in there. Then we take that box out and we put it inside our house for a few days. And the reason for that is because it will condensate, all right? And we let it sit in the house for a few days. And then um, after it's kind of dried out in the house, um, we put it in a plastic bag <clears throat> and store it in the top of our freezer. There's some plastic bags left over from, sorry, the top of our garage. There's some plastic bags left over from previous years. <coughs> Excuse me, but, um, you know, we, are, we were really worried about moisture, but we have found if we let it really dry out really well inside the house in the air conditioning after it comes out of the freezer for several days, then it's dry enough and we can put it in the box and we haven't had moisture problems. The other thing we do then is in the winter when it's cold and there's no pest danger, we'll take them out of the bags, clean up the frames, remove the propolis. You know, sometimes we'll just even store them up there because in the spring, they're uh, perfectly safe. One of the one of the challenges is that with even with the bags on, there's still a smell of honey. So if we leave our garage door opens open, the the honey bees will find it and we'll have a bunch of bees in our garage. So we just kind of keep our garage door closed the last couple of months of summer. So, but otherwise, it's really not an issue. So um, that's our process on honey supers. So I thought I'd share that with all you all you out there. Of course, the very satisfying part, filling up the bottles. It does take a lot of time when you have to do over a hundred of them. But uh, we fill them up and then we slap on one of our labels and a nutrition bottle and they are ready to be consumed. Got little drips that we take off. the labels over here. Due to the volume of jars we have this year, I'm not going to be able to show a summary of what they all look like. Um, but you can see, you know, we've got them lined up for the people who've called and paid that want to pick them up. We're bottling some more. We probably have another 60 bottles or so to bottle. Um, so, successful year. All right, well, cleaning cleaning, and lots of cleaning. We've cleaned out our uncapper tub and a couple of the buckets. We still have a couple of bottles or buckets of honey we need to, uh, to bottle. And then I have rinsed out the wax clippings. Basically, I just put them in a big bucket, wash them out, and then use this to collect them. They all float on the top put them in this pan um, to melt them for filtering. Here's the, uh, here's the first uh, pass that we did with the uh, first batch of supers. And then you can get another look at the candles. Sorry, not the candles, the bottles. There's a lot of them, but we probably still have another 40 or 50 more to go. So, and we've sold a lot. So, progress. <laughs>